Hi, my brothers and sisters in Christ. It's your brother and fellow evangelist, Michael Zuccaro. Um, I'm trying to be upbeat today, but there is a, something that's heavy on my heart. And it's a question a lot of people ask. As a minister um, of God, I'm often asked, why do bad things happen to good people? Or why did bad things happen to innocent people? especially innocent children. How can you explain that to the world? Uh, they want an answer. You know, people that don't know God at all, and a lot of the reasons why they won't turn and believe in Jesus Christ is because of a hardening of their heart, maybe due to tragedy, loss of children. You know, these type of things are um, the world can't justify apart from God. They don't understand. And they'll point their finger at God and blame him as being um, the cause or blame him for not intervening. And I, that's the message today. I just wanted to clarify and, and show people who God is in the midst of these tragedies that seem so atro atrocious that if there was a God, how could he possibly allow these things to happen? And it, the answer is simple. And the, you, you may not like it, but the answer is free will. Free will. It has to exist. And God in his sovereignty has allowed free will to exist. Meaning he has given me and you a choice of whether to love him, to obey him, or to not love him, or to not obey him and to follow the world. So in order for this free will to exist... In our ability to choose free will to exist, God um, has put this in place to see who will choose him, who will love him. So it has to exist for true love to exist. Good and evil have to exist for in order for us to make a choice. In order for us to make any choice, free will has to exist. And we all appreciate the fact that we have the right to choose, right? So when your freedoms are taken away from you, you can see that you, you can immediately see like, oh, I don't like that. I don't like my rights being taken away. Exactly. God's a just and perfect judge. And he cannot go against his perfect will. And his perfect will is that we have free will. <clears throat> that way we have the true ability to love him, to choose him. We have the ability given by God to choose this day, life or death. To follow God or to remain in darkness. So instead of being, to, we have the ability to choose light or we have the ability to choose darkness. And the light is the truth and the light is the knowledge of God, the wisdom of God. In the darkness there's the wisdom of this world, which is foolishness to God. Men in their pursuit of wisdom did not know God, and they became foolish. <clears throat> God said, choose this day whom we will serve. Romans 6.16. 6, Can we turn there? Romans 6.16. 6, Open your Bibles to Romans 6.16. 6, That's right after the book of Acts. And I'm sorry it's taking me so long. I should already be there. But Romans 16 says, Do you not know to whom you present yourself slaves to obey? You are that one slave whom you obey, whether of sin leading to death or obedience leading to righteousness. But God be thanked that though we were slaves of sin, Yet you obeyed from the heart the form of doctrine which you were delivered. We have been set free from sin, from darkness, and we become a slave of righteousness, or a servant of God, a servant of righteousness. And guess what? I'd rather be, we're a servant one way or another, whether you know it or not. And if you're not a servant of God, you're a servant of the enemy by default. There's only two choices. So I choose to be a slave of righteousness leading to um, eternal life. And if you become a slave of unrighteousness, if you become a slave of the world system, 
that will lead you to death. <clears throat> Jesus Christ came to destroy the works of the devil and to provide redemption unto God for all mankind. So let's look at 1 John 3, 8. 1 John 3, 8 says that he came to destroy the works of the devil. Well, how is it that we see the works still? If they're destroyed, how is it that we we see that um, these things still happening? 1 John, let's turn to 1 John 3, 8. It says here, <clears throat> He who sins is of the devil, for the devil has sinned from the beginning. For this purpose the Son of God was manifested, that he might destroy the works of the devil. Whoever has been born of God does not sin, for his seed remains in him. And he cannot sin because he's been born of God. So you've been born again, born again of the Spirit. Jesus Christ imparts his righteousness to you. You've been redeemed. You've been redeemed unto God. Jesus came to set the captives free. We were captive to sin. And we, apart from Jesus Christ, we are captive to sin, the world, the lust of the flesh, and the devil. Um, because of the fall of man, because of the seed of Adam. So just as we were born of the seed of man, we need to be born of the seed of the Spirit which is Jesus Christ. So the first man, Adam, um, we were born after. So likewise, Jesus Christ, the second Adam, we were born again of the Spirit of God. Let's turn to John 4, 6, 14, 16. Hang in there with me. I'm going somewhere with this, okay? We're answering the question, why does God allow bad things to happen? And my case is that in order for free will to exist, <clears throat> you know, evil things are going to happen because uh, good and evil have to exist in order for the choice to be made, whether or not you will choose to be a servant of God or a servant of the world, a servant of the devil. So John 14, 16 tells us this. And I will pray the Father, and he will give you a helper, another helper, that he may abide with you forever, the Spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive, because it neither sees him nor knows him. But you know him, for he dwells within you and will be in you. I will not leave you as orphans. I will come to you. So when Jesus Christ ascended into heaven, he said, it's expedient that I go into heaven so that I can send my helper, the Holy Spirit, who will lead you and guide you into all truth. So God, Emmanuel, God is with us, us as the believers. So now, okay, if people say, well, where is God when these terrible events are happening? Us Christians should stand up and say, here I am. Here we are, the body of Christ. Jesus Christ, Holy Spirit, is here in the earth, in his believers, and we should be the voice of God crying out into the wilderness um, of the lost. <clears throat> so we should be the light in the midst of a crooked and perverse generation, among whom we shine as lights in the world. And light is just a meaning as we direct you and guide you to the truth. I'm not trying to take away from these terrible events, right? I mean, they are terribly terribly wicked and of course the more wicked and evil it can be you know the devil wants to get glorified by that so we need to as christians destroy the works of the devil and how do we do that by presenting truth and the truth is that god's word is true and he's in charge he's in control he doesn't see all the way we perceive death isn't isn't accurate we perceive death the way that the world perceives death and if you keep if you do that you'll miss it entirely it says to be absent from the body is to be present with the lord so we know in second corinthians 5 8 it says to be absent from the body is to be present with the lord so we know that as soon as we fall asleep and we believe in christ jesus we're immediately in the presence of god so there is no death 
Death no longer has dominion over us. We've been set free from the works of the devil. Because sin brought death. Jesus Christ came to give you life, and that life more abundant. <clears throat> leading into everlasting life. So we see that there. And, you know, truly, it's not cliche. There truly is a better place. We, we're so used to hearing that. And anytime you've gone to a church service, they're in a better place now. Or uh, somebody will tell their loved one, don't worry, they're in a better place. Well, yes, that is exactly true. And that's what we're supposed to believe because that's what God told us. And we know that his word is true. And we know um, there is one truth in the world. And Jesus Christ said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And that no one comes to the Father but by me. Jesus Christ is the truth. In the, in the midst of a crooked and perverse generation where there's many different ways, where there's many different truths, where people say that, well, my truth is my truth. Well, guess what? God's truth is always the truth and it never changes. So we can trust and be um, at peace that God has given us a word that never fails, that is always accurate. It's always true. It's always relevant. It's the same yesterday, today, and forever. And God's word is is perfect. And let, it's way ahead of its time. People say it's an outdated book. Yeah, right. We, we're catching up to the information that's in it still. And, to, and we will until the end. What God has revealed to those who love him. We have yet to see God's true plan fully unfolding. And we're, we're going to. As we're in the last days and perilous times are coming. And men will be lovers of themselves. And, you know, people will be cold. Their hearts will be giving in to wickedness because their hearts have grown cold. And um, we're seeing that. We're seeing that with the more and more the increase in the shootings, we're, you know, week after week after week. I've seen something in the news. It was like 201 shootings already this year. And it's only May 30th. And, um... It's just unbelievable how cold the hearts of men have grown. And that's because we've departed from, we've taken God out of the schools. And you can see statistically, since God in prayer has been removed from the schools, um, you see any graph will tell you it just up, 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 up. School shootings increased. Violence in the schools increased. But before that, it was so rare, it was never seen. So there's a direct correlation statistically that when you remove God from the schools, you know, you've basically asked him to leave. You have, well, if you've asked him to leave, who comes in his place? The deceiver. You know, so when you ask why could these things possibly happen, it's because you asked God to leave the school. But um, anyway, so, you know, it is horrible, these tragedies. So really the children who are dying we see on the news, we can rest assured that they are truly in a better place. And it's not just a cliche. God is real. Heaven is real. Eternal life is real. And God's promises will never fail. And there was a reason that they need, you know, that their lives had to be lost. We may never know this side of heaven, but there was a reason that God allowed that in the midst of his sovereign plan. Okay, so that, that's another thing. We all have free will, and because of sin, things like this, and because of the devil, tragedies like this happen, because they can get hold of a man's heart and mind and have him to do something wicked be, uh, based on how bad his life was, based on how much the devil had been working and causing hurt in his life. And it just it finally resulted in the outward manifestation of the inward uh, cold darkness of his heart, he was able to, you know, kill innocent children. And um, it's just, it's tragic and very disgusting and very wicked and very evil. And the devil does these things, you know, and, that, and that's another thing. That's funny because when these things do happen, we never, people never say, oh, devil, why'd you do this? No one ever said, they always say, oh God, why did you allow the, let this happen? Or, oh God, why did you do this to me? No one ever points the finger in the direction. Isn't that funny? That no one points the, 
Isn't that, I'm, I, it's not, I shouldn't say, isn't that funny? I said, it should, isn't that a coincidence that no one ever points their finger in the right direction? See, the greatest trick the devil ever pulled was convincing the world he didn't exist. I don't know, I heard that in a movie one day, but that, that is the greatest trick he ever pulled. He wants everybody blaming God for everything bad that has happened. When really, in any time something bad happens, it's God that's the one who's going to comfort you and get and give you peace through the midst of a storm. So if you're blaming the person who's your only help, you'll never be able to get out of the situation. That seems very um, diabolical, that plan of the enemy. If you're blaming the only one person that can help you or save you, you know, you're going to dig a deeper hole for yourself and end up doing something crazy yourself, which will bring forth death. So his plan, the enemy's plan is to still kill and destroy. God's That's never been God's plan. His plan is to give life in that more abundant. And he loves you. and He cares for you. And he's there for you. When your heart's broken. Um, God loves a broken and contrite heart. That's when he can He can touch you. That's when he can reach you. Is when you're void of self. And he, he's the only one that can lift us up. And truly give us that peace that passes all understanding. So be anxious for nothing but in all things by prayer and supplication. Let your request be made known to God in the peace of God that passes all understanding will guard your heart and your mind. And it's that peace through these type of storms, through these type of tragedies that can get people through it. And apart from that, you know, it can be so devastating. People um, will turn away from the faith. People will blame God. People will um, just sometimes they'll never recover. They'll never find it in their heart to forgive. They will never find it in their heart to love again or to open up again. And uh, this type of damage that the enemy has done can destroy generations, actually, um, if they don't know Christ, if Christ isn't um, introduced. But, you know, everything that the enemy meant for evil, God will turn out for good. So um, let's wait and see what, you know, um, good is going to come of this. I know it was very horrific, but, you know, God will work it out for our good. He will change that so that no school shootings will occur anymore. Maybe there's no reason there shouldn't be security in the schools anyway. In every school, um, in every hospital, in every um, facility where there are innocent people, um, there, there's no reason why one simple camera can't be installed and one security door can't be installed that's just that's standard and that's it's actually evil and diabolical that that has not happened so um think about that and again if people ask where god is in the midst of these things we need to be looking at ourselves we need to point to ourselves and say are we being the christians that god has called us to be are we the image bearers of Christ. We should be the Christ-like ambassadors that he has called us to be because his Holy Spirit lives in all of us and we're to be a living epistle. Our lives are to be living epistles. So this is a call for everyone to show comfort and compassion to the brokenhearted as Christ did. So let's look at Luke 4.18. Can we turn there? Last verse, I'm closing, okay? Luke 4.18. Let's go there. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed by the enemy, and to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. And that year of the Lord is now. It's the season of God's grace. God sent his only begotten son into this world to die for our sins. And whoever believes upon him shall not perish but have everlasting life. God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. And the Spirit of the Lord is upon us to proclaim liberty to the captives, to set those 
who are in bondage to the world system and to sin and the devil to set them free. They said, if anyone in this Christ, he is free. If the Lord has made you free, you are free indeed. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted. So we, with this truth, with the truth of the gospel, that God has an eternal resting place for us, that he has a heaven beyond human comprehension, where all of our loved ones who have passed, who have fallen asleep, we should say, are in his arms and being comforted. And those who will reject this message, those who reject and continue to reject God, will be in a place of torment with a constant reminder of a message like this that told them, hey, turn from your sin, believe in God, and he will heal your heart. He will save your soul. So please, do not harden your hearts in this day, in these last days, these perilous times. Do not harden your heart. And these things we pray in Jesus' mighty name. Amen.